Um, here we go. Quick note on the USC LSU game. Great game, by the way. Like I, oh. I really enjoyed watching it. Holy shit, yeah. go Big Ten. Yeah. Um, sixty three thousand fans were in attendance, and that is more than the Super Bowl they had there in Vegas. <laughs> That's wild, isn't That's it? A wild stat. Yes. That's one of those things again. Stats today that um that, that don't feel real, but it is an overreaction Monday. I'll be overreacting. Zach will be checking me the entire show, and you guys are probably overreacting in the chat now as well. I saw Rod Farva put, um, "Is it realistic that Tom Herman is the next Florida head coach?" I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> and maybe I'm wrong for assuming it, but he doesn't look healthy enough to be the Florida head coach to me. And I think that's what I'm like hanging my hat on. Yeah, it's, you know how it is. It's, it's all about how he does this year, right? He's yeah. got to he's got to have a lot of success. Obviously, clearly he had some success week one against Michigan State. Um, it'll be interesting to see how their uh, their year plays out. Yeah, that that's that's a fact. But it is overreaction. But I got LSU played USC Big Ten versus SEC matchup. That game is truly the Spider Man meme. I've been saying that for a long time. Teams that are almost in identical spots. Um, Miller Moss maybe looked like the best quarterback in the Big Ten. We don't know Baller. yet. Phone breakdown will tell us. Twenty seven for thirty six. 378 yards and a touchdown to Nussmeyer's 29 for 38, 304, two touchdowns and a pick. USC pulls it off in what was a great game, dude. It was a great game. I mean, the over-under was 66 points, I think, or 64 points. They mm -hmm. ended up scoring 47. Like, who would have thought that the two teams last year that had prolific offenses and atrocious defenses would play each other and you'd see solid defense? Now, what we don't know and won't know for several weeks was – was that just inept offenses or was it really good defense, right? And and the film breakdown this week is going to help us identify it. But I thought Miller Moss was outstanding. Zachariah Branch is just so electric. So dynamic. So electric. Um, I worry about USC and their inability to run the ball. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I don't know if that was I, – I, Harold Perkins is a fucking monster. One of the best – one of the best defensive players in the country. He was a beast. And But a 10-10 game at half? Who had their money on a 10-10 game at half? I would have said mid-first quarter it would be 10-10. to just, I thought that people were going to score every time down the field, and, and the way that LSU opened up, I thought they were going to. I thought that's what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but dude, I really, I really like Miller Moss, man. Like he's got his frame looks just like Stetson Bennett's. He's got some gamer is gamer in him. Yeah. Uh, made that made that made those throws late, big play late. But I'm not sure if there's anybody else in the country that is more dangerous with the ball in his hands than Zachariah Branch. I'm not yeah, sure. Great. I mean, he, he really did. I mean, he obviously didn't have like a no, prolific. didn't have a huge game, but like when he caught the ball, I mean, honestly, it was a kick returns. The kick yeah, returns, it was like the oh. kick returns. And I, he, I mean, he he had four catches for 56 yards. I, th I think he had three of them in the first quarter, or first yeah. half. Like it, it looked early, like, oh, he's about to go nuclear. And then they, they did a good job kind of taking him out of the game. But when he every when he touched the ball, he just looks different. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I know, I know he didn't have a ton of touch, offensive touches, but kick returns and the four catches he did have, I thought he looked just dynamic. Just really, really explosive. Um, thoughts on both defenses? Were these good defenses or inept offenses? Or do you, is, it, is it easy to tell at this point? And how surprised are you that USC got the win? Um, I, I'm surprised. I thought LSU was going to win the game. But um, it, I can't sit here and tout great defense when you had eight, what, 871 yards in the game combined. I mean, it was, like true, it was true Ben not break. Yeah, Ben not break. They didn't allow him to score a lot, but they were they were moving the ball. I, I, I am worried about USC's rush attack. I mean, run, running for 72 yards in a game, a game mm. where you, you had 450 yards, that's that's concerning. Maybe LSU's great up front. Like I said, I'll, I'll wait till I, till I can study the film. Um, but I think it was a hell of a win for USC. So something I did, I did not see coming. I thought LSU would go out there and I thought they would win a high scoring game. And now it's making me wonder, is USC relevant in the Big Ten? I mean, we watched Michigan, who, who we've always said, I mean, it's Ohio State and Oregon, maybe Penn State three and then Michigan. Right. Mm -hmm. I think everyone that was everyone's pecking order. And Michigan fans would have would have inflated them a little bit. Ohio State fans maybe deflate them a little bit. But now you're looking at teams like Nebraska, who look great. I know against dog shit and USC look really good against LSU, but you know, uh, the 13th team in the country, the preseason polls told me. So I think USC could become a player. And now you start looking at those schedule previews before where you're counting on, Oh, Michigan will probably beat USC, beat USC or right. this school. Like they, you know, they don't have a defense and Caleb Williams is gone. It's like, well, that defense looked a lot better and Miller Moss ain't bad. 
LSU's offense only generated three plays of 20 or more yards versus USC. Last year, the Trojans defense gave up over 70 plays of 20 or more yards. Yeah. That is at least progression. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's listen, it's all about, okay, have they improved? Well, we have one piece of work, one piece of artwork to look at, and it's much improved. That doesn't mean, you know, as it plays out, you find out reality, right? Maybe LSU stinks on offense, mm-hmm. and we'll find that out by, by about week five or six. Like, damn, they're really not good on offense. They're really missing Jaden Daniels. But I do want right- to, I, 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 Pat has this video. I want to play it, Brian Kelly, and just get your thoughts on it. Yeah, let's, let's watch it. Disappointing when those guys perform and you, and you don't get a victory. Hell yes. Hell yes. I mean, and, and that's what I said to the team. I said, we had some guys played their butts off tonight. And, and we're sitting here again. We're sitting here again talking about the same things. About not finishing when you have an opponent in a position to put them away. But what we're doing on the sideline is feeling like the game's over. And I'm so angry about it that I got to do something about it. I'm not doing a good enough job as a coach. And I got to coach him better because it's unacceptable for us not to have found a way to win this football game. It's ridiculous. And it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not wrong. And I, I liked it. He owned it. I mean, ultimately, finishing opponents – Fourth quarter. I mean, they got what they got scored out outscored at 14 to three in the fourth quarter. Yep, 14 3. Not finishing games in the fourth quarter is a direct reflection on how hard training camp was and how hard your strength room is. That's what it is. Yeah. Like you need to be trained to when you have your foot on somebody's throat, start the fourth quarter. That's why people do that stupid shit and put their fours up. Like now's the time where that winter weight room comes into play, where how hard training camp comes into play, and you stomp on their fucking throat. And if you don't do that consistently, that's as much as you want to say it's on the players, that's on your program. That's an indictment on Brian Kelly. His team can't finish. That's on him. I know players have to execute, but ultimately your whole program needs to be built and, and developed and designed in the culture to when you get to that fourth quarter, that's when you throw haymakers and you try to knock them the fuck out. Like you've been grinding on them for three quarters. It's time to TKO, right? Put, put their lights out and they can't seem to do it. And it's been that way for really, this is year three. They just can't finish at the end of those games. The way Harbaugh could never win that bowl game until he did end up winning the bowl game. is kind of what Brian Kelly's going through right now at, at LSU. This is now his third straight loss to open the season while at LSU, obviously 22 and 23 losses to Florida State. Now the loss to USC. I believe they were favored in all of those games uh, for what it's worth. Do you want to get to commercial break and talk a little bit more about Brian Kelly? So let's do it. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, you know we love to add a little excitement to our sports experience. And that's why our sponsor, Prize Picks, is back to get you in the game, right? It's America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active users. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And in the, month of, the whole month of September, they're giving you a gift right here. One Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win. So if you want to do two player stat projections, there's one, pick another one, and it's a cat, it, it, it's a winner. Um, if you <laughs> prize picks is the only real money daily fantasy uh platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineup stays in play, even if one of the, your players gets injured. If your player leaves the first half and doesn't return, prize picks keeps your 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 combination alive. I've loved it. Pat is huge into this. Justine and I love using this every weekend when we go watch sports, specifically football. Um, would throw some something like Tyreek Hill for more than 90 receiving yards and Dak Prescott for less than 263 passing yards and cash that thing in. All you have to do is download the Prize Picks app today and use code Menace, and you get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code Menace on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks. Run your game. Prize picks is the best. It's my favorite. I know Pat's a big prize pick junkie. Prize pick them. I love betting. So I'll, I'll, I'll get into my some of my bets that I hit over the weekend here a little bit later. I want to stay on Brian Kelly here for a, a quick sec. Since Brian Kelly's first year at LSU, has LSU progressed and gotten better as a program? I mean, I, I would say no. 
right? I mean, it, especially because in year one, they went to the SEC championship game, right? right? They had such success in year one, and now it's year three, right? Now you're talking about there's very few Eddie O players left. Now it's Brian Kelly's players, especially with the transfer portal. Year three is when it's it's his program, right? It's, it's no mm-hmm. longer either riding the coattails of the previous coach or trying to fix what the previous coach did. It's year three, bub. It's your, your team now. Like you've recruited these kids, you develop these kids. The culture is yours. It's no longer a a carryover from the Joe Burrow Eddie O culture. It's now your team, and coming out laying an egg, not finishing the game against USC. Unless USC is a, a ass kicking twelve and zero team at the end of the year, this is. I mean, they they've downgraded since he his first year. I know Caleb Williams has to be looking at this USC team like, damn, I'm sick. Like, y'all waited to get everything else figured out until after I left. The offensive line looked like it's improved a lot. The defense looks like it's improved a lot. I was one of the people that wrote off kind of USC as, like, uh-huh. not ready for the Big Ten. Looking at their starting O-line, you got 6'7", 320 left tackle, 6'5", 320 left guard, 6'5", 310 center, 6'4", 335 right guard, 6'5", 315. They're big all the way across up front. Across that's a true. That's a true Big Ten offensive line, Zach. It is. I mean, they av- they're they're averaging six four, six five in between six four and six five, three twenty, like yeah. across the board. And it's it's a lot was talked about Dan Lanning and getting Oregon ready for Big Ten play. Not enough was talked about Lincoln Riley doing the same. Mm-hmm. And they just went toe to toe with an SEC juggernaut and beat them in the fourth quarter. That's something that. Lincoln Riley's always had this program where it's like flashy offense, great quarterback, may, probably a Heisman, maybe number one overall pick, like has a note card and calls plays. And they've never really been talked about as having great defense and being a really tough football team. But that's that's the team we saw last night on Sunday night. Yeah. And don't get it twisted. Like, that's a really good LSU pass rush. <laughs> so I know that, uh, you know, at, at times guys were getting beat. But shoot, I expect everybody to get beat by Harold Perkins at some point. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm curious to see kind of how, how you would grade them in the coach's film room because obviously, like, to my naked eye on TV, I, I thought that they did a better job than I thought they were going to do because I thought they were going to be one of those teams that got pushed around. Yeah, absolutely. 